Hello party people and welcome to Icy Straight Point, Alaska. There's probably a sexuality joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to make. Uh, you may hear a bubbling in the background. That is not Alaska, that is the hot tub. Uh, we are out on a cruise on aboard the Norwegian Jewel, uh, going from, where do we go from? Seward, Alaska, down to Vancouver, Canada. Uh, it's a pretty overcast here today out in icy straight point. Um, but we, if all goes well and it doesn't rain, we're going to do a zip line, the world's largest zip line, not the longest, but the largest for weird technical reasons, uh, where you and up to five of your friends can all go zip line down six uh, wide zip lines uh, down from a mountain down to the cruise ship, which is kind of cool. Looking forward to that. It's only the second day of the cruise, third day? I guess technically the third day of the cruise. Uh, first couple of days were at sea. Uh, first day was at port, and then the second day was at sea, but having a great time. Uh, so, and been up here a bunch of times. I absolutely adore Alaska. I think cruises are really the right way to see Alaska. You see some phenomenal scenery, not today because it's overcast and you're looking out away from icy straight point, uh, but it's an amazing way to see glaciers, mountains, wildlife from the boat. Uh, and then every uh, day or two you go out into a port and you can go see bears and eagles and all kinds of stuff close up whale watching, go fishing. It's absolutely incredible. So let's go hit some of your top voted questions from Pole Gab. Top voted question, oh also this definitely does not have any alcohol in it whatsoever. Top voted question is from Rollback is single threaded who asks, if a high-quality blog post involves original ideas, T-SQL, a great demo, and images to prove a point, but then it uses an AI tool like Grammarly or Tr Google Translate to edit the content, Google might delist it. Do you have any ideas? Yeah, write in your own local language. Don't try to write in someone else's language. If you don't speak English as your primary language, I totally understand how it would be frustrating because English is by far and away the language that most uh, bloggers read or want to read through. But the reality is, is that you need to write in the language that you're comfortable with because your target customers are in your own language. When you're going to present at conferences, you're going to present in the same language you're used to. So you want to build up a reputation in the language that you use, not someone else's language. Um, I, I know that can be intimidating. You might want to go, well, I'm going to wait until I learn English better. Don't do that right now. Give away uh, whatever content that you can in the language that you're comfortable with. So for most of us, that's probably going to be our native tongue. Um, in terms of Grammarly, Grammarly doesn't make big, wide-ranging changes as long as you're writing in your own local language that you got started with. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about Google delisting your content as long as you're focusing on that kind of content. Uh, next up, my tea got cold. asks Can you think of anything that Service Broker is best is the best solution for? Modern alternatives seem better. Yes, I actually read this question ahead of time, so I, I have the luxury of knowing my answer that I would give right away because I sat on this overnight. Let's say that you're a uh, software vendor who ships software that needs to sit on site at uh, someone's office. Maybe you're selling into the Fortune 500 or you're selling to dentist offices or something like that. And your solution needs some kind of queue, but you don't want to rely on other solutions, like you don't want to put it in Amazon SQS uh, because you're worried about the round trip back and forth to the cloud. And also, you want to have as few parts to your solution as possible. Like, you, ideally, you just have one persistence layer, and that keeps everything in it. Service Broker would make sense for that, assuming that you have SQL Server as the database layer for that application. Next up, we have Just Wondering, who asks, do you have a sense of what percentage of your followers are administering systems that are custom-built versus vendor apps? I think far and away most companies have both. 
you don't build everything from scratch. You're going to have some kind of management utilities or document repositories or security systems that use SQL Server as a back end. Plus, you're going to have some in-house components for things that you wrote yourself. So I think in the vast majority of shops, they have both. Uh, next up, Miss Minutes asks, once an availability group is stood up and it's got two high availability nodes plus an off-premises DR node, do we still need to do SQL Server full backups? Yeah, because what happens if someone drops a table? What happens if someone runs a delete without a where clause? What happens if someone has a deployment that goes wrong? Those changes are instantly, well, nearly instantly propagated to the rest of your replicas. So being able to fail over somewhere else doesn't really do you a whole lot of good if that data is garbage too. Next up, some like it asks, do people use always encrypted? I have the feeling that it's a quite an unused feature. Yeah, so it didn't come out until what, SQL Server 2019 or 17, I can't remember which version it was. And most of the people who were in, who storing personally identifiable data already needed to have it encrypted at the application layer. So they'd already come up with some other solution. Always encrypted really only makes sense for either ground up new developments in the year 2024, because the feature works, it's just fine. There, there are best practices out there on how it works. Um, or if you uh, are suddenly taking hold of an old legacy application, but you're still actively developing the front end and you can make front end changes to accommodate always encrypted, that combo is fairly rare. It doesn't mean it's a bad feature, it just means that it came out so late in the game that it only really affects new development from the ground up. Next up, Chandwich asks, have you ever successfully changed a database collation for a large database? Any tips for doing this? No, no, I have not. And not because it was a failure, but once I had listed out to everyone, oh, there's a boat down here. Oh, it's the tenders. The tenders are starting to let people off. Um, the, once I explained to the business, here are going to be the drawbacks with us doing this. Here's how long it's going to take. Here's uh, the amount of the way it's going to affect our availability groups or our database mirroring or whatever. By the time I explained all that, the business was like, you know what? Yeah, hold on. What, what, are, what are we doing this for? Which comes back to the question that I ask a lot. What's the problem that we're trying to solve? And if you're, the biggest problem you're trying to solve is joining between two different databases with different collations. First, you want to change the smallest database possible to match the larger one. The other thing is to use indexed views and computed columns in order to pre-bake additional columns with the joins necessary, uh, with the collations necessary to support your joins. But that, that helps you avoid rewriting the same database. The, tar the end database doesn't look very good. You don't like having duplicate data stored across multiple columns. But that's a change that you can do live with the database still online instead of rewriting a whole database from scratch. Boy, that coffee's delicious. I gotta have some more of that. I never make Irish coffees at home, and I probably should. St I probably shouldn't start because I at home I actually have to work. At home, I don't have the luxury of getting drunk at whatever a.m. this is. I think it's like 8 a.m. here. Next up. Daniel asks, hi Brent, do you have a course or do you know of a course that teaches you how to become a consultant? Not a training course, uh, but the best book I've ever seen on this is a book called, uh, uh, geez, Secrets of Consulting. Secrets of Consulting. I had to stop and think about what the book's title was. Uh, the author's name is Gerald Weinberg, W-E-I-N-B-E-R-G. Uh, fantastic. It doesn't teach you things like invoicing or how to get sales, but it teaches you how to give advice in a way that clients are likely to take it. As you read through that book, you'll see a lot of interesting pitfalls and challenges uh, with being a consultant. 
But from a big picture perspective, you have to figure out how to bring in work. Uh, you have to figure out how to negotiate contracts with clients. You have to figure out how to deliver your deliverables. <laughs> Uh, and then you have to figure out how you're going to sell them on additional work going forward or get word of mouth referrals to other work. Those are your big challenges. Then you wouldn't want to have one training course that teaches you how to do all that. You'd want to focus in on the different areas that you need to learn. Uh, the, and the fastest way to do that is to go to work for another consulting firm. You know, go to work for another consulting firm and then they'll teach you some of the things, but it, it'll also be an, enough of an eye opener that you'll be able to decide whether you want to build the whole firm yourself or whether you just want to let them do the hard work and you can just keep doing the technical work. Uh, let's see here how long we've been going for. Oh yeah, sure, let's do a couple more. Um, Logar the Barbarian asks, is SP Database Restore expected to work with Azure Blob Storage? From my review of GitHub, it does not appear so. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about open source, right? You can just go read the code, just go read the code, and figure out if it does the thing that you need it to do. In this case, the answer is no. It's not expected to Azure work with Azure Blob Storage. It says, if not, what would you uh, suggest for restores to other servers? I don't have any use for Azure Blob Storage. It's, I don't have any use for is the wrong term. Um, I haven't needed to solve that problem with Azure Blob Storage. Um, if you need to, you may want to check with the community and like do Googles for it. I don't think you're going to find an automated tool for that, because uh, I don't think even Ola Hollingren scripts necessarily work directly to Azure Blob Storage without some uh, tweaking around. Um, so yeah, you're, you're kind of on your own there. You, may, you could absolutely take the SP Database Restore code and uh, make whatever changes are necessary to get it to work with Azure Blob Storage, but that would be an exercise for the reader. Uh, and then Laszlo asks, when a store procedure needs a long list of input ideas, IDs, do you prefer a comma delimited string or a table valued parameter? You asked me what I preferred, so I'm going to tell you what I prefer, a temp table. Your code should create a temp table, dump in the list of IDs, and then the stored procedure should assume or require the existence of that temp table. Like the first thing in there would be, if exists, select star from sysall objects with the name of your temp table. Um, and check to make sure that it exists and then join right to it. Use it as part of the query because you're going to get in most uh, situations better estimation and better execution plans. I go into much more detail about the pros and cons of that in my Fundamentals of TempDB course. Uh, so you can watch that to learn about the pros and cons of the temp table solution, uh, table valued parameters, uh, in memory table val or table in memory temp tables, and all kinds of other stuff. All right, there we go. That is a good round of questions. The next time that I see you, I'll be in somewhere else in Alaska. I think uh, our next port, I think, is Skagway. Uh, but oh, I love all the little ports up here in Alaska. They're just so charming. So. Hope you had fun and learned something, and I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.